This is CliffCentral.com. Good afternoon and welcome to Auto Central on Cliff Central, powered by Auto Trader, your trusted motoring marketplace. I'm Wilmarie Janssen van Rensburg, also known as SA Speed Queen, and joined with me is George. Hello, Wilmarie. Hello, George. And Chad. Hi, Wilmarie. Hello. Thanks for being here. There's a whole lot of love in the studio today, and we have a wonderful guest, Trevor Murray. Did I say that right? It's fine. Is it, is it okay? That'll do. <laughs> Trevor is from CMH, um, Franchise director, director, actually. Correct, yeah. Welcome. Um, and I, I'm going to hand over to George straight away because, George, I know you have a lot to say. And uh, you guys know each other. So there's some very interesting topics coming up. Absolutely. I've got some very interesting questions to ask Trevor. And uh, Trevor's been uh, been around for quite a long time um, in, the, in the motoring game. So, uh, so I, think, I think we're going to learn a lot today. Well, that's great. But before we get to that, um, in terms of CMH um, and all the the dealers that you work with, etc., all the interesting questions, (coughs) just some feedback on, by the way, what did you guys get up to this weekend? Um, Filming. Filming. Yeah. No, I was just filming. Filming, testing. Filming and testing. That was pretty much it. I went flying. Um, So so we all did something extreme. Yes, we all did something. Was the weather okay up there? Yeah, no, it's winter's fine. The air's very dense, so uh, uh, the, you know the the airplane's pretty stable. Flew uh, uh, flew from uh, where I hang a hang of the airplane to uh, over Broncospray Dam. Went to had a look at Broncospray Dam, um, around past Dalmas, and then uh, um, and then landed in um, Springs uh, Airport, and uh, had breakfast there, and then flew back. It was a bit bumpy coming back. That's all the uh, wings. Or did you at least no, drive no, down no. to the wimpy at Springsgate? No, no, no. We, they, they, the, the, all the, <laughs> this is this is a pilot thing. <laughs> Everybody organised no breakfast inside a hangar. Okay, so. fantastic. No, I was just about to say because if you have to go down to Silver Wings, I feel for you. Well, uh, you know what? I tell you a small story. Um, um, on on approach to Springs uh, um, Airport. Um, I over the radio, you know, the pilots talk to each other mm. over the radio. I uh, I heard a, a gentleman come over the radio saying um, he's approaching the Springs Airfield um, in an aircraft called a Glass Air. Now my aircraft is doing 100 miles an hour, which is 160 kilometers an hour, on approach to the to the runway. Uh, this Glass Air was doing 250 knots, which is about four 350 yeah, 400 quick. kilometers an hour. And uh, he came past the left of me like I was standing still. And the wash? No, there was no wash. Fortunately, <laughs> gee, because they could have put you off. <laughs> Explain yeah, so wash. Fun. Uh, wash, almost like a slipstream that you'll get from a ah. bike or from a rider. Somebody comes mm. past your, tr- you go past a truck and you just get that buffet of air, mm. and same sort of thing Isn't happens. Isn't this underneath this. though? Very dangerous mm. to fly behind another aeroplane um, because of the what they call wake turbulence that comes off the the wings, um, as well as the prop wash, which uh, which Chad's talking about, which is the, the the rotation of the propeller, and all of that dirty air is behind that aeroplane. If you get into that, you could get into a bit of trouble. Mm. But it seems to be a, a, a general thing in any case. Well, I think the only place where slipstream is an advantage is probably on the bike. Because I watched on the weekend um, boats, like, what do you call these raft? Uh, I mean, it's really fast. I, I don't know exactly what you call them. Well, either the but Formula One power boats or the some, offshore something boats. Something like that. And the one guy came a little too close to the other one and flipped Ooh. in terms of his, you know, that yeah. what do you call it? That's the, the wake. The wake. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So, so no, in, in, an, in an aeroplane, <laughs> slip dreams are not a good idea. Yeah. Mm. How does the guy land at that speed, though? I mean, the so, tires. Wouldn't cope. No, so so he wasn't uh, he wasn't, he wasn't coming into landing. Lake. He was right. uh, he was passing he was passing me so that he could get to take another another loop to come and land. But uh, his 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 approach speed uh, when I heard him on the on the radio his approach speed was 115 knots, um, which is still 220 230 mm. kilometers an hour. That's fast. That's very quick. Yeah. Well, talking about speed, we'll get to that a bit later in terms of uh, what we'll finish the show and what's coming up this weekend. But I came here this morning slightly. Fast or uh, on the on the Triumph Speed Triple. And I was taking a look at that just now. That is one pretty machine. <laughs> it's a beautiful bike. Look, it's not meant for high speed because <laughs> it doesn't have a screen. So it's yeah. really a little bit of a thing. But it's a thousand cc small nippy and it just turns and it goes and it's got a performance pipe on. So I, I was in my error. element coming here. Yeah, Do you ever put your bikes on the back wheel, Vormi? Not planned necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it does happen occasionally. Yeah, when you hit the bump or whatever, if you really pull off quickly, uh-huh. it can happen. But generally not planned no so um so from that side the triumph speech i mean i thoroughly enjoyed that but i think let's get to also by the way do you guys know it's women's day coming up 
Mm-hmm. Yes, I heard so. Yeah, Monday. Monday. Yeah. Monday. No, no that's Sunday. 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 Sorry, Sunday with Monday being my the public word. holiday. My bad, my bad. <laughs> is, is Monday a public holiday? Yes. Yeah. My goodness me. Yes. You were flying on the wrong weekend, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Just try book flights on Tuesday morning. Oh, well, well, uh, exactly. No joy. Uh, but I mean, Monday there's a lot happening w- related to uh, motorsport, obviously, mm. um, and the weekend and women in motorsport, etc. But um, George, you want to kick off because I know you have quite a few questions you want to ask Trevor. Yeah, but uh, b- but before we get there, um, our 99 yes. cent new car campaign, which is absolutely rocketing. The social media interaction and activity is unbelievable. We can't we can't believe how this thing is. Um, Some is interesting going. guessing. People want that car very badly, and uh, no, we won't tell you what it is. How um, do you know? <laughs> <laughs> well. There are some people. There's very few people that know what the yeah. car is, but um, uh, sure, but the, between the two of us, we both in the studio, we don't know. Okay, good. I don't know if you know. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's very few people that know. But um, the, the the clue for today is uh, the boot volume is the same amount of blood that the human heart pumps each hour. So that's the next clue, which uh, would have dropped, would have, which would have <laughs> dropped about an hour ago. Now that's very tricky, actually, George, because for many of the clues that we've given away already, you'll be able to use the Auto Trader Search and Compare tool on the site. Yes. Now, sadly, we do not have a medical site <laughs> <laughs> that we can do this with, where we can compare cars to, to <laughs> items of the anatomy. Or I'd rather use water or something, surely. The, I, you know what? I know of this really cool site that you can go find that out on. It's called Google. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. You're going to have to expand on the Google on your Googling skills so, here so and go and find out uh, the, uh, the details there. And then, of course... So the volume, the fluid or whatever, yeah, so you can the, find that. The volume, of, uh, the volume of blood pumped by the human heart each hour is the same size as this, as this car's boot volume. So, uh, so go and have fun. That's an mm. interesting one. Right, tricky. I'll go Google that just now. <laughs> <laughs> the phone. But, uh, but 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 on to on to Trevor and uh, um, so welcome Trevor. We uh, we're really glad to have you here. Um, I've known Trevor for a while, um, and uh, Trevor's uh, been a uh, a customer of of Auto Traders for a while. Trevor Trevor's business CMH. Uh, what is the what is the proper name for CMH? Combined Motor Holdings. Combined yeah. Motor Holdings. Plain and simple. Uh, plain simple. and simple. Makes simple. sense. Simple. So <laughs> how long has CMH been around? Probably oh. two decades. No, th- nearly 30 years now. 30 years I now. think they're listed in 1987, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, 28 years, that's a good stretch. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and how long have you been with the business? 20 years coming up uh, next year, yeah. Okay, so, okay. so there's, there's, there's pretty much nothing you don't know about CMH and about the motoring industry. Uh, you know, I think you're pretty yeah, much Yeah, it's pretty much the only job I've had. So, yeah. so. Brilliant. Yeah. Once you get in, you never get out. You never get out. <laughs> um, so, so what kinds of brands do CMH uh, uh, stock? Uh, pretty much everything. Eh? We do Mazda, Ford, Suzuki, General Motors, Toyota, BMW. Um, who have I left out? So pretty much a Nissan, big Volvo, Nissan, Volvo, Land Rover, Volkswagen. Jaguar, VW. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so. Okay. And uh, um, and 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 over the years, um, how many dealerships have uh, have CMH kind of um, managed to open up? Well, it depends on whether you count PAG, which is a Land Rover, Volvo, Jaguar, as one or as three. So, yeah. but about fifty-five deal- okay. dealerships in total. Yeah. So, so CMH is a is a is a serious business. Mm. I mean, so we do. Uh, we yeah. specialize in the motor game. So. Yes. That's that's uh, that's our focus. We're the only listed specialist uh, motor retailer on the stock exchange. Wow. We also do trucks. We've got UD and Iveco. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, what, 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 UD and Iveco um, truck tractors, or uh, do you do trailers as well? Well, the trailers are generally ordered uh, custom-made by the, by the customers, by okay. the clients. So, tra- truck tractors, and then, yeah, they'll order their, their specific trailers. Okay. And are, are, are all the DM, de- dealers in CMH uh, franchise dealers? So, they, uh, they're all uh, used car and new car? Or uh, 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 you don't have any just used car dealers? Um, no. No. We, we, we prefer to have them with the dealerships, because obviously the, the trade-ins feed from the dealership into the used car lot. Yeah. And it you know, used cars are a little bit short, so stocking a used car operation if you're buying the cars out is it's not as profitable as obviously if you if you've got a steady supply coming through your dealerships. Yeah. yeah. What what do you mean short, Trevor? If you can just explain. The, the right the right kind of car, generally on the, on the used car lots, the guys are always trying to find stock. So to sell. To sell, yeah. So so private people bring in your cars and sell, yeah. so they're struggling with that. Okay. So um, and 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 how many cars uh, in the whole group? 
I know, I know I think you list about 2,500 cars with Autotrader. We probably sell on used cars about 1,200 a month. Okay. And then about hmm, two. Two and a half thousand new cars, yeah. Yes, okay, okay. So, so a serious operation. I mean, uh, uh, CMH listed um, uh, 50 dealers, uh, two and a half thousand cars, um, and uh, uh, selling about 1,200 uh, 1, a month. So, so, so you and, uh, and, and CMH should have a really good overview of, of how the, the car market is performing. And uh, wh- how would you characterize it, both on the new and the used yeah. side at the moment, Doc? What, are, what is happening? I think used used is is picking up a little bit, largely because of the affordability side. I mean, when you we're in in, in a country where GDP growth is slow, the economy is not exactly pumping. New cars have become more expensive with the interest rates, so you you end up in a in a slightly declining market so far. New cars year to date are down about two and a half percent over last year, same period, and used is fairly steady, uh, if not growing. Yeah. Um, just because of an affordability point of view. Um, the nice thing for the customers, possibly with new cars declining, is that the manufacturers have quite a lead time to reduce their inventory. So they've they currently got a lot of the manufacturers got a lot of inventory, so it's a good time to buy because they've got incentives, trading yeah. assistance, etc., to, sell. to yeah. sell the car. Mm-hmm. So uh, as a customer, if you're thinking about a new car, this is certainly a good time to do it because yeah. you'll get the best deal. Yeah. So where would that be? Oh, with whom? <laughs> pick, pick a manufacturer, seriously. They, really? Yeah. So basically all of them? All of them, Mostly. Yeah. So you can go in there and negotiate, say, come, you have incentives. <laughs> well, <laughs> a, l- a lot of them do. Eh? So, and they will they'll use that to, to assist you with your trading because quite often you might owe 100000 on your trading, but it's only worth eighty. Mm. So they'll have trading assistance to bring up the balance so you can settle it and get yourself a new car. Uh, so that's a, uh, it's a good time to do But it gets it. worked in somewhere there. Into the new one, basically. Yeah, yeah, okay. cool. Yeah. So, I mean, as a as a dealer group and as a, as a set of dealerships, what, you know, how would you how would you how do you find doing business um, in the in the market today? So that's the you know the consumer's viewpoint in terms of them shifting their uh, their buying <coughs> patterns from new cars to used cars. Mm. But um, uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that most dealerships are finding that shift de- uh, difficult to grapple with. Uh, I think as long as you're operating in both markets, it's fine. But yeah. I think the the thing now is the consumers are far more educated. And it's not so much a case of the salesman knowing every little detail or spec on the car. Because generally the customers have been on the net. They know what they're talking about. It's more for them to build a rapport with the customer and for the customer to find somebody that when he walks in there, he doesn't think someone's going to steal my 400 grand away from me. Yeah. He wants to find someone he can buy a decent car from. Yeah, uh, and and you can trust and 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 get along with because it's not you know it's not we don't want to sell anyone just one car. We want the guy to come in, buy a car, or lady to come in and buy a car, and the next one, and the next one, and service with you and buy parts. And mm. if he has an accident, you know he needs to buy new headlights, etc. from from the dealership. So you want to you want a customer who's going to be around for a long time. And I think that's put a lot of pressure on the dealerships to treat the customers properly. Mm. And you know you've also got the manufacturer keeping an eye on things. So we have a CSI customer satisfaction index in all the dealerships, which the manufacturers monitor very closely. So How does that, that work, Trevor? Well, they they send out uh, uh, emails or they phone the customers after delivery, and it's a questionnaire based on their experience. So and that's run by the manufacturer. By the manufacturer, not by the not by the dealership itself. Yeah. So as a, as a customer, it's it's really good when you do fill something like that in for the dealerships because then we know. Where we're at, mm. or was your car maybe not clean enough on delivery, or you know, from having a had it service, they never washed the car properly. That, that kind of things. Often people, ugh, they don't really complain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, at least as a dealership, if you fill in that survey, it can be anonymous if you want it to be, and then we we know where we stand, and we can hopefully improve things for you. Mm. Well, I mean, let's talk about that for a second. So, how um, how has the uh, uh, the perception of dealerships changed in the mind of the consumer, in your opinion? Um, because um, way back when, and maybe there's some uh, some perception of that now, uh, dealerships used to be or used to have this cloud over them. Um, you know, a used car salesman is just trying mm. to do me in. Yeah. Um, you know, how does how does how's that perception changed over time, and uh, uh, what has dealerships specifically like CMH done to try and change that perception? I think it's it, it really comes down to a trust issue and the services you can offer a customer. You know, buy a car privately, work out how to license the car for starters. I mean, you, you'll stand in the queue at the licensing office, then you don't have this form or that form. That'll take you two days. 
So, I mean, just that's just a, a simple example on how dealerships can offer a, a better service. Mm. We make sure the cars aren't stolen. Yeah. You, know, you don't know what you're buying. Yeah. You know, we make sure that the finance is settled. You know, there's no point paying a guy cash and the bank actually owns the car. Mm. Yeah. So there's there's all those things that that add up. We send the cars for for CRRs. We do on used cars, obviously. We do checks on them. For and accidents we, as well. Uh, yeah, for accidents as well. Mm. And and you know, we find that from a workshop point of view, obviously your technicians are properly trained, and the technology in cars today. I mean. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think Chad said to me the other day, there's no such thing as a bad car anymore. No, there isn't. Um, but you, you, you just find that the majority of cars nowadays, the electronics are so sophisticated and so advanced, the old technician who can strip a motor and put it back together isn't needed anymore. Mm. I mean, yeah. it's, You plug in your little diagnostic you, you, and it tells yeah. you. <laughs> but generally speaking, the mechanically-wise, with the, with the modern um, materials and machining um, skills that the guys have, you hardly have engine failures and stuff like that anymore. It's yeah. all this wire's got a nick in it, or the rat has charged just one wire in the loom, and you got you got to find that, and that takes a lot of skill. Yeah. yeah. Um, so from the workshops, the guys spend. Oh, my guys are probably on average, um, probably a month's worth of training every year, okay. just on 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 electronics and 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 the likes, which gives the customer a, a, a peace of mind that their car is being well looked after. And I mean, why did this perception exist um, in the past? Why, why, why did this perception exist that uh, dealerships are just there to do consumers in, which is seems to be not the case anymore? Uh, yeah, I think maybe in the in the old days it was uh, there were a lot of rogues out there. I think franchise dealers have always been very upfront, and and a lot of it's and maybe it's right or wrong, but the manufacturers were always the, the watchdogs. So, you know, the customers would come by from a franchise dealer. If there's a problem, get out of the manufacturer yeah. if the dealership didn't sort it out, and they put the pressure back on you. So and, as, and as a dealer, you you, know, you, you really don't want that to yeah. happen. So, so I mean, just maybe to, um, that's uh, changed uh, over time. The, the dealer's uh, way they've dealt with customers over time. And so CSR, you know, actually now know what your customers think about you. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, I mean, what, what, what typically, if uh, uh, if there's a bad franchise dealer out there, what typically would the manufacturer do um, if uh, uh, if they if they have bad CSI scores or if they're treating consumers badly? Um, you know, it's just to, to give the general public the the um, comfort mm. that there are consequences. No, so the manufacturers would certainly get involved. Most of the manufacturers have a customer care line. They have a proper procedure that that they follow in, in dealing with with any problems. And if a dealer repeatedly uh, has has complaints and is unable or unwilling to to resolve them, the, the, they will have their franchise removed, well, and and that has happened in the past. Um, Jenna, I want to ask you something that was directly related to myself. I'm not going to na- mention the brand, but it actually doesn't fall mm. within CMH. To, and I've quickly checked now. It's probably a good but, thing. <laughs> <laughs> but this is now what happened to me. Um, I went and bought a second-hand car, reasonable price. Fortunately, I understand a little bit about the handling of the mm. car. So I noticed driving home that something wasn't right in terms of maybe it's just balancing. So let's go sort it out. But it ended up being a lot more than that. The tire was actually busy. I mean, there's a term for that where it's, it's starting to separate. It's yeah. yeah. Now, I mean, this is on, on my two front tires of the vehicle. I just bought the car. So firstly, my, my feeling is new, that shouldn't be allowed. Car. Second-hand, Second-hand car. Second-hand car, okay. But still new yeah. you know what I mean um, so now I went and spoke to the guys and said that for me it's not acceptable I think they have to replace the tires but that kind of thing shouldn't even leave surely leave the shop because that's a hazard that's a dangerous uh, um, a thing with the tire what do you do in a situation like that look fortunately the guys know me and they know the background mm. so they also under I think understood and it was a lot easier to change the mm. tires but what happens to the general consumer who doesn't have that experience uh, because this is now an uh, insurance risk as well. No, I, no I agree with you. I mean, look, most of most of the dealers I, I manage, they, they, they test drive the cars. All the used cars go through a 101 point check, go for a CR, etc. You can you can miss things from from time to time, but the Consumer Protection Act covers you in in that regard as a as a customer. You're entitled to receive a car in good working order without any defects. And defect okay. would be in this case the tire. Yeah, which is mm. which is patently obvious. Yes. You know, had you driven the car for five thousand Ks and then you know the car the tire started to delaminate, you might 
there might be a debate. Be debatable, yeah. But I think in, in, if, if that had been one of my dealerships, they would have changed the tyres mm-hmm. on the turn if yes. they had missed it. I mean, so that's, uh, that, that, that's quite an interesting uh, topic. So what questions should consumers be asking dealers so that they don't get into a mm. situation? I mean, particularly uh, people that don't know a lot about cars, uh, they could be driving away and, uh, and have this problem. And, and drive know. and just yeah. don't know how to, what it is. Put their own life at risk. So what yeah. kinds of questions should I, consumers be asking? I think the most important thing is to drive the car. Like you said, you drive the car, you, you immediately felt there was something wrong. And don't just drive it around the block. Take it for a proper test drive. So you can feel if there are any vibrations, any untoward noises you might hear, and clear that up with the dealer. And make sure that if the dealer agrees, or the salesman, for instance, they, salesmen tend to sometimes exaggerate what or overcommit what they're going to actually give you. So if he agrees, for instance, to fix the scratches on the mag, but you know, the mag repair guy is, is away for a week on holiday, when you take delivery, make sure it's noted on the delivery note. Mag repair still outstanding mm. because sometimes the sales manager doesn't Communicate. know what the salesman has promised, mm. Yeah. Mm. and then there's always a debate. So if, if I can give one bit of advice, anything you want fixed on the car, or you must agree up front with the dealer and make sure it's with the sales manager. And you note if it's outstanding at the time that you're going to take delivery, make sure you note it on the delivery note. So so that's quite uh, that's quite important. Mm. I mean, uh, uh, um, every car has a delivery note that the customer needs to sign that he's taking yes. the car and the car is in good order. Every single one. And it, and it goes through a proper check. Has it got a spare wheel jack? Yeah, are mm. there any outstanding issues? And on the new cars, has the cus- have you been explained all the features and, of, of the car? So, I mean, I, it, it's, it's probably something that everybody misses mm. because a car is such a passionate purchase. You just want to get in and bloody drive and it. You're, um, so, yeah, you're so excited. Yeah. You overlook most, yes. most of the things that are actually generally obvious. Mm. Mm. And I think things like the service history. Make sure the service history is up to date on the car because mm. that obviously ensures that the warranty, if there's any new car warranty left on it, is still in place. And, and you must just understand when next to service the car. Uh, that's what I was going to say now. If you if you miss your service, your your warranty lapses and then you, you're in the cold. So you could very well buy a second-hand car that is one year old. Um, it's missed a service and uh, the warranty's expired, and you might be none the wiser. Exactly. So uh, so that needs to be clarified with the dealer. Yeah, because isn't that surely the dealer's responsibility not to sell that? to the client or to at least sell a new Look, service? It, it depends how the car was advertised. Mm. Yeah, if, 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 if the car has no factory warranty, they won't advertise it with a factory warranty. But if they do, and it's a question you need to ask them, has the car got any factory warranty mm-hmm. left? Because that does add value to a car. Mm. Mm. So there's actually a lot of questions that the, the prospective buyer actually does need to consider and ask the, the salesperson, the sales manager or the dealership yeah. before committing to something like this. Uh, you may be thinking you're getting a great deal, but in fact, as Vilmarie said, that well, warranty has expired, something of the sort, mm, just that, because that of a missed been, service, something yeah. of the sort. And you're thinking, wow, well, I'm yeah. getting a great deal, but there's so many hidden clauses here, so to speak. And then, of course, like you're saying, making sure that each and everything on that uh, delivery note has been ticked off, has been agreed upon, and is is quite, you know, quite satisfactory. No, 100%. I mean, if, if, you, if you actually end doubt... For instance, if you're at a Ford dealership and you're buying a VW, take the chassis number along to a VW agent and ask them, what is the service history on the car and when is it due for its next service and is the warranty still valid? Okay, that, that, um, that's, that, that's, that's something that's that, that you can mm-hmm. do. Uh, I mean, you take the chassis number or, uh, uh, or the, the VIN, VIN number, number, yeah, yeah, the VIN VIN number, number yeah. um, which is on the windscreen of, uh, of all cars. Yeah. Um, and uh, and take it to the actual um, the agents, uh, agents yeah. that, uh, that that manufacturer or sell the car for the manufacturer and ask them for the service history. And uh, and most most dealerships will give it to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, mine will. The only thing with this is, though, am I right in saying that if you do that, the, the thing that's not on that, let's say, call it the system, is is um, certain accidents. Am I right in saying Correct. that? Because yeah. a lot of these things will not show there. So who do you trust then for a situation like that before you just buy? Because a car doesn't have to be written off to be repaired. Uh, repaired. To be, yeah, yeah, repaired or badly so, you know, in terms of uh, look, wheels. and. I, I think looking at a car, if you, if you look at a car carefully, you can you can pick up if it's had paintwork or panels are out of alignment, you use slight different colors in the paintwork. Mm-hmm. And I mean, quite quite often you'll find that uh, a car's had a had a gate close on it, so the door's been scratched and 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 it's been repaired. That doesn't 
devalue the car. It's been repaired properly at a at a panel shop. All the all the all the all the panel shops generally use paint that is guaranteed for life. So there's no there's no devaluation in the car. Where you have problems is where you have chassis being bent, not straightened properly. Yes. Uh, guys have used second hand parts in the suspensions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you feel uneasy about the car. Take it for a, an AA test. But I was going to ask that as now. Now, that's not a cheap thing to do. So what, who well, pays for it, that? It's cheaper than uh, finding out six yes. months down the road. And No, fair yeah. enough. But let's say something is wrong. Is that, does it, wouldn't that have to become the dealership's uh, Well, I, I'd do that before I, before I bought the car. So take it to the AA. You get your peace of mind if you, if you doubt what the dealer is saying. And uh, and then you you can take the car back and decide whether you want to buy it or not. Well, I guess uh, I mean you know you uh, everything's everything's up to how you negotiate with the between the car buyer and the car seller. So, um, you know if you if you talk to the dealer and uh, say to them right up front, listen, yeah, I want to take the car for an AA test. I'll pay for it. If there's nothing wrong with the car, I'll keep that. I'll I'll, I'll fund that cost. If there is something with, uh, wrong with the car, um, you then know, it was your piece of uh, yeah. Would you yeah. would you would you fund its repair and the cost for this test? You know, so so I mean, I think I think dealers dealerships are open to, no, to are that sort of thing. It, yeah. Yeah. And most dealerships have the uh, I think seventy two point check that you're oh, able 70 to do. Seventy two hundred and two, but it goes through <laughs> the cars fairly points. comprehensively. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, um, we're going to get back to um, Trevor two just now because I've got some interesting questions on what CMH is is busy with. You know that people don't actually see. And I'm sure George has got quite a few more. But for now, uh, we're going to just play the Auto Trader ad. And then, Chad, over to you because uh, I almost missed, but I'd never miss, your um, write up, your, your test drive on the My new review. Master 2, your review, yes. your expert review. I'm so sorry. I would never have missed you, but we'll get back <laughs> to you on that now. Choice. Sometimes you have it, and sometimes you don't. Auto Trader gives you the choice. Now you can shop, compare, and buy new cars. Watch our expert video reviews and research before you buy Auto Trader New Car. The choice is yours. Stand a chance to buy a brand new mystery car for just 99 cents. You heard right, 99 cents. Follow the clues on Twitter at Auto Trader SA and use the hashtag 99 cent new car. This is CliffCentral.com. So we're going to go over to Chad now. He's going to tell us a little bit more about the Master 2 1.5. Yes. Tell us, Chad. Well, okay. I must say straight off the bat, and I was actually chatting with Trevor about that earlier, that uh, Mazda's, Mazda currently has got a fantastic range of vehicles, and they really are they're marketing it properly, and they're offering fantastic packages as well. Uh, just, just straight off the bat, the cars are offered with a three-year unlimited kilometer warranty and service plan, so it's uh, it's a great peace of mind. And Trevor, you were mentioning earlier that just for a small amount of money, you can extend that to five years unlimited Yeah, I think on the, well. on the Mazda 2, I think it's about 3,500 rand. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, I mean, if you look for a, a warranty, it's that's pretty cheap. It's, what did it's, you just say? Unlimited. Unlimited mileage warranty. So if you're unlimited if you're a rep wow. or something like yeah. that who's doing big big mileage. I need that. Yeah. <laughs> there it's, we it's, go. It's, and I'm not even a rep. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's 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 a great benefit, and it's not only to give you peace of mind. If you come and trade the car in, say after three and a half years, you trade it in, and you can tell the used car manager it's still got another one and a half years worth of factory warranty. You'll get probably on a little Mazda 2 like that, 10 or 15 grand more. Yeah. It's an so absolute it actually, on that. for for three and a half thousand rand, it's it's an absolute bargain. Definitely is value in your in your pocket in that. But the whole car as a whole, I was extremely extremely impressed with it. I did some serious mileage with it. I ran Joburg to Kimberley and back in the vehicle and uh, loaded up with four adults. And while you may think that's a small 1.5, only making 83 kilowatts and 145 newtons, it handled any sort of gradients. Loaded up four adults, all their luggage, back and forth without an issue. I had the automatic one on test. And while it can be a little thirstier than what uh, Mazda claims, it still wasn't bad. Nice and economical. Have you driven a car yet that meets the manufacturer's claims? Yes, I have, actually. Surprise. Well, <laughs> I have. He has. Several. Several. <laughs> okay, well. um, and he's, he's even beat the manufacturer's yeah. claims. I have, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, the, the Mazda 2 was, was pleasantly surprising. It really was. Um, the biggest standout aspect for me was the trim level, um, the spec level, and just the general overall design, both outside and in. While I feel it's a little under-tired, under-wheeled, uh, runs on a set of 16-inch wheels, would look a little better with a slightly larger wheel. But I know that they went a little smaller like that, gives you a little more rubber, makes it a slightly more comfortable drive. 
in terms of running costs, 16-inch tires, 17-inch tires, much of a muchness in this day and age. Affordable. Mm. It's, it's fairly mm. affordable. You know, it's not massive and it's not out of proportion. Uh, it, it was really, really a great drive. Uh, the, what I kept on telling everybody with it was, if I had to put you in this car, blindfolded, cover up the badge and then take that blindfold off, and you didn't know what car you were in, and you had to guess what vehicle you were in, chances are you would say something Italian. That is how the interior is designed, crafted, and finished. Absolute mm. beautiful, beautiful place to spend time. I love the interior of the Mazda 2. It's absolutely yeah, you, phenomenal for that price. You're quite a fan of the, the in, <laughs> interior of a car. I mean, you, you're very yes, yes, specific I, I spend on a that. Lo- yeah, I am <laughs> very, very specific on the interior of a car. It's it, where you it, spend the most time. It doesn't look cheap. It doesn't look for, cheap. For, no. a, for a well-priced car, it, it has a very, very upmarket feel to it. Extremely upmarket feel. You would say that the car costs about eighty to 100,000 Rand more when you just take a look at the okay. at the interior. And also the touch and finish of everything. It's one thing having a 300,000 Rand car, but then it's got a 50,000 Rand sort of plasticky interior. Mm-hmm. And that's terrible. It's a bit of a letdown. We've seen this a few of those now. We have. Unfortunately, <laughs> we have. But this one, just the, the touch and feel of everything and the general finish as well, extremely high standard and it's a great place to spend some time what is it going for um the 1.5 individual auto 222,800 rand that's including that and of course that three-year unlimited kilometer warranty and service plan there's 136 of them on uh, on auto trader sites at the at the moment i mean obviously uh, a lot of those are, uh, are second hand but uh, sounds like a brilliant car well yeah we're talking about the latest one yeah, the previous and it's and it is a considerable leap over the old one mm. old one wasn't bad for its time, but having this new model to actually compare it to, you realize the shortcomings of the previous generation. So it really is a solid, solid choice. If you're looking for a small hatch, pretty cheap to run, very reliable, and a stunning looker. It turns heads like you won't believe. I've got this thing that I call HTF, which is head turn factor. And the Mazda 2 you has... Test it, I, you <laughs> test it, You test it. You test it. Drive around in what I'm driving now this week. And you sit there and you're like, wow, I'm just wallpaper. I'm just being ignored left, right and center. And then you can drive cars that you don't think have appeal. And it, and it garners attention. And who doesn't like being looked at? Who doesn't like being noticed? We want to. It's human nature. So, uh, And the Mazda 2 got a lot of great response. Even just pulling up to a parking lot, I'd have people approach me at the car wash. People approach me, is this a new Mazda 2? Wow, it looks even mm. better in, in the metal, you know. I've seen it in the pictures and it's been appealing. Mm. But this is a fantastic looking vehicle. What does it go for? Starting to ask the questions. And the colors? Colors, not overly exciting. Not overly exciting. They're not ones to go with your your bright yellows and oranges and that type of thing. You can get it in there. I think it's the Hazumi Red. Soul Red. Soul Red. That's yeah. the one. Soul Red, which well, that's is probably quite the, nice. It's a very uh, nice it's color. It's a stunning color. Um, but generally, most of them are slightly more muted blues, greys, um, your whites, blacks. So it's under the radar type mm. of. Under the radar, but still manages to grab mm. that attention just with the what they call the the Kodo design element. And this is now form and function meeting each other, uh, where it's aerodynamic, but it's still you know, it looks pretty. And it really yeah, is. The, the whole concept is the car needs to look like it's moving, even though it's stationary. Even though it's stationary, yeah. yeah. I, I went to Hiroshima to the design center. So okay, yeah, so there we I, go. I, I got, got the can... whole spiel. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's I see I see CM, yeah. CMH has got uh, got a cracking special running on uh, on, on the Mazda 2 for 180,500 Rand, mm. uh, 7,500 Rand saving. That's on the yeah, but, but yeah. I mean that's the quite active. a difference that's on the one active. you've just tested yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a different, well, it's, uh, different it's, variant. It's a slightly different variant, but it's still mm. a, a fantastic little car. Absolutely, and the, the the standard spec level is so high that when it comes to options, you don't have that much to choose from. But that's not a bad thing because it's already bundled with just about everything that you'd want. So you get the small little items like, do you want a sunroof in it? Um, you know, do you want? I think they do offer it with the leather interior, but there's no even no yeah, need to go. Yeah, it's an Yeah, that's an option. And that's almost like the two only two options that you really get on it. Mm. The rest of it is all standard, including the MZD I- infotainment system, mm. which I still think is one of the best on the market at the moment in terms of functionality and usability. Mm. Mazda went with their own software there. They didn't hijack anybody or copy any – well, sort of copied. Uh, Japanese tend to be pretty good at that. <laughs> but uh, – it's no, they copy and improve generally. They, yeah, they generally <laughs> do. Uh, and it's a fantastic system yeah. to use. It is so user-friendly and intuitive. It's clean. It's probably one of the best systems that I've ever used. And it's very rare that you find a car where uh, where it's specced up from the from the word go. Um, yeah. Most cars you have to add, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, George, 50 thousand rand to spec the car. Up. It's a big. Uh, it's one of my bugbears at the moment with a lot of the German marks is that it's one thing when you see the price of the the model, but then you need to remember that's a baseline model. 
And I'm just thinking back to, and I'm going to mention the names, I'm thinking back to, granted it's a higher spec vehicle, but something like the BMW X6M that I had on test, or that I went to the launch of, fantastic, 1.6 million rand, but then as soon as you spec it, the options list alone is 350,000 rand. Well, if you're you can buy Mazda 2 for what that option list costs you. If you're spending 1.6 million rand on a car, I'm sure you've got 200 grand to spend on specs. <laughs> but it's a lot of items that, I'm not going to say that you, ca- you can't do without, but it's, it's just... Mm. Whoa, silly, silly prices. So you've got to always consider that as well. When looking at a vehicle, when wanting to buy a new vehicle, you need to consider what are you going to want to spec it to mm. and what are those options going to cost you. The base model, the base price is one thing. Yeah. A spec price is a mm. completely different thing. And Mazda seems to have got it right in the sweet spot, yeah. I think so. I, I believe so. Is it is it the same? I'm just curious. With cars and bikes now, the moment you put extras on the bike, you cannot ever get that back when you sell the bike. I mean, uh, it depends, depends what it is. Mm. For instance, um, on some of the German marks, if you don't have sunroof and sports pack, your car's worth a whole lot less. Mm. But if you fit some, ob- like Logic 7 sound or arbitrary uh, accessories, Z9s don't really count for much. You don't really get anything mm, back Parking camera or something. Yeah, park sort, distance yeah. control. You don't really get anything back for that. But Those are there nice are cert- to Yeah, there are certain features that people expect the car to come with so yes leather d- leather certainly helps a bit but uh yeah it's uh it's you generally if you if you spec it with 17 inch wheels instead of 16 not gonna make too much of doesn't a make much of a difference yeah. Yeah. i'm just curious um trevor just to get back to some of the questions on on cmh mm. as well you guys we, we spoke a little bit early on on uh engineering because it seems mm. like that you know in general that's quite a bit I mean, all manufacturers do those themselves. Yeah. But you guys on your website have a section where you um, people can apply for jobs as well. Yeah. Now, I think that's great. I, d- I don't know if a lot of people even knew that. So well, the, the interesting thing with the motor industry is nobody ever leaves school and says, I'm going to go be a car salesman or I'm going to go an engineer. run a dealership. Or I'm going to, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's generally not a aspirational as, job. Uh, well, because no one really thinks thinks about it. Yet yeah. The motor industry, if you include the manufacturers and everybody else, so the, the, we're the second biggest employer in the country. A massive market. So it's, it's a massive market. And there's, it's, a, it's a very specialized market. So if you look at a, at a dealership, you have, uh, you have the parts department. So that's stores, uh, inventory management, logistics. You, you have your workshop, which is, to some extent, you could say a production line. Mm. Uh, and then you obviously have the sales and marketing, which are new and used cars. And then you've got the, the finance side. So there's actually something for everybody. And, yeah, we're always looking for for people to, to come in that have got an, a passion for cars and and, and want to go further in life. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great career. And, I mean, you, you look at, uh, you know, you go – Generally, once you become a dealer principal, I mean those those guys are earning pretty decent salaries. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I've always said that if you can if you can properly sell cars, mm-hmm. and I'm not talking about uh, you know kind of just uh, order taking when someone walks through the door, mm-hmm. but you if you can properly sell cars, you're one of the best salespeople in the world mm-hmm. because it's uh, I think it's a really tough job mm-hmm. to sell cars because there's so much of the internet that makes things transparent. There's uh, there's so many cars available. Mm-hmm. There's so much choice. Um, there's a lot for a consumer to go and consider, and if you can close a deal as a car salesperson, um, time and time again, really good salesperson. Well, I think that's where like the really good salespeople we've got, they are very knowledgeable about the cars, but they look after their customers. And uh, we've got some guys. The one chap, his wife actually manages his customer base because he just has so many customers he can't stay in touch with everyone, and he sells 15, 20 cars. Wow. And and for him to now become a sales manager is crazy because he's making so much money as a salesman it would be a step backwards. So, <laughs> if you can't be replaced, so, you can't be so, promoted. So yes, there are there are there are professional salespeople out there, and that's what they do, yeah. and that's what they'll do mm-hmm. till retirement, and they make a very good living. His kids are in private schools; he, he does wonderfully well. Yes, and so, uh, and there's there, there are lots of them out there. So would you say people are staying once you like you were saying, you actually mentioned that earlier once you get into CMH you you stay you stay you, you've been there you know 30 you, if, years. If, if if you if you if, when you're in the motor industry every it's different you know every single day is different every single manufacturer I deal with is different uh, the customers are all different uh, there's different programs every month so it's never it's never boring I don't think I could ever go and I don't want to say bankers are boring but I could never go <laughs> and just sit and do 
one desk thing, job. You know, a desk job. You you always making a plan. You always scheming. You always you've got all your different departments you got to manage and run. So it's it's a very very interesting uh, industry. And I think a lot of people leave it and then they go, geez, they're bored now. This is a little bit dull. So yeah. So what do you um? So do you allow if we have to say to the to everyone out there now, if someone's interested in getting involved mm. in the motor industry and finding a job within it, go onto your website and just send their CV. What is your requirements? Because I didn't see anything specific. Look, there. I, obviously you've got to have a matric driver's okay. license. That's the, the absolute minimum requirement. Uh, and yeah, if you if you have a tertiary education, a BCom in marketing, etc., then they, you obviously you have a better chance of of getting employment. But the one thing with the motor industry, it's a very much a a qualified by experience type of game. Mm. So you can't come out of varsity with a degree and think you're going to become Make it in the, the dealer principal. Yeah. You, you you have to go through the sales process into the workshop, see how that works, parts, and then progress from there into management. So it's not a – there's no there's no university for car sales. So you've been through all that. I've done all of that. Absolutely. <laughs> Paid the school fees. But that's good news, though, yeah. for someone who maybe can't afford those exactly. uh, studies no, exactly. and things. You know, mm. it's, a, it's a great industry to be in. Mm. So um, if, we can, uh, if I can ask you a different question. Um, uh, the Internet has changed the way everybody does anything really? uh, nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> how, how has it affected uh, uh, dealerships and, and the way dealers do business? Because back in the day, you'd have uh, consumers coming on a weekend. It was almost like uh, show houses, and they go from dealership to dealership. Um, so how has the dealer environment changed with the advent of the Internet? I think the customers are obviously a lot more informed. You know, in the old days, if you launched a new car, it was exciting. You know, people were sitting on the showroom waiting for the car to arrive. Mm. Now they all know what it looks like. They know all the specs. It's they've googled it up you know, front. Yeah, you know, so it's, <laughs> it's pretty much you know, from from that aspect. That whole excitement and, and secrecy is gone. Yeah, you know, so they they come in a lot more informed. And uh, and uh, I mean even just the way we do advertising. Uh, you know, when I started in the game, we had an old guy Eric Pearson, and he had to say, "Come boys, we sit around and you'd make up the adverts and." Yeah, you'd cut, you have pictures, and then you'd have the little descriptions in the newspaper, and then you'd always the papers would phone you at the last minute. Hey, we've we've got a, a full page for whatever ten grand. Do you guys want it? Yeah, you know, someone else has cancelled, and, and all that stuff. And, and that's something that's all gone away now. Now it's a case of it, we have specialist people. That's all they do. They just sit and make sure that your your offering on the net, because that's your new show. I mean, if you mm. if you the, the important thing is actually make sure all your cars or actually on offer on the net because that's where people shop. Mm-hmm. Um, and are you are you finding that people are uh, are shopping your different dealerships more, um, or are they shopping the different dealerships less? So are they walking in knowing what they want and buying a car, or uh, you know I would imagine in the old days it would be a case of okay I'm going to look at this car I'm going to go look at that one down the road and then I'm going to look mm-hmm. at the next one. Whereas I would imagine that today it's kind of like almost a, a, a sealed transaction by the time they get to your dealership. Look, I think by the time they get to the dealership, they've been on the net, they've had a look around, mm. probably sent out two or three inquiries to different operations, and then decided amongst those who they, who they actually want to go and have a look at. And I think the nice thing with the, with the net is it's, it's just a silent salesman. So the more information you can give the customer, the better your chances of actually getting them into your dealership to, to do a deal. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I just want to ask, on the flip side of that, do you feel that possibly the the additional information that's out there has actually made it more difficult in term, in the, for the dealership side of things? No, I, th- I think the, the, the important part is just to build value in whatever cars you got on offer. Uh, and then it's it's really up to the up to the customer to make up their mind. Competition's always good for good for everybody it keeps you on your toes mm. and you got to mm. you if, 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 if it's not a game for sissies eh? so if, 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 if that's a problem for you then don't come and sell the wrong industry like, yeah yeah okay yeah because like you say you got to be at the top of your mm. game the whole time but i mean that's something you guys do on on so many levels um trevor i also see that you you have a project called adopt a school yeah um could you explain a little bit more about that uh, what what we did is uh from from cmh's point of view we Toss all the our employees to donate money on a monthly basis, okay? And then CMH matched that that amount, um, wow. which we then used to upgrade various schools. Uh, 
can't think of the name of the one now. It's just outside Durban. But we rebuilt the entire science lab for them. Wow. Uh, helped out with the gardens, etc. So mm. it's a it's a project that we feel and and maybe from from helping them we'll actually get some decent people out of that from a technical point of view to come and well, work yes. in the dealerships yeah i mean that's we that's also we also train me. probably over 100 apprentices a year on on a regular basis uh we have learnerships for service advisors uh, uh admin clerks etc that we that we run on on an annual basis um so yeah we do we do a lot of um work in in upskilling people because you've got this ECD, early childhood development, so that seems to be what you guys you investing in while you see, yeah. you I mean you are at the top of your game in the industry, and at the same time you're investing into early childhood development. What goes around so, comes around. For sure. Eventually. So yeah, That's we so we true. do obviously have a have a social responsibility. Okay, and and what would you say is the biggest need in the industry at the moment? Um, I, I know from an engineering point of view. There's all, there can always be more people interested. Mm. You don't leave school thinking, oh, I want to become a mechanical engineer. Mm. Like you were saying mm. earlier, people don't leave school thinking, let me go into the motor industry. What would you say um, is a key thing for people to change their mind about or to think about to be to get involved in the motor industry quicker from an early age? I, I think just uh, knowing what you want, really. I mean, if you if if you're interested in sales and marketing. Or if you if you're more technical, electronically inclined, there's there's a, there's a spot for for everybody in in the game. Even accountants, uh, obviously. I mean, we somebody's got to count the money that we make. So it's a <laughs> it's there, there's a career for for most um, career paths that that people want to choose. Uh, and but yes, like I said earlier, no one really seems to leave school thinking I want to be in the money industry. I, I strongly suggest you, if if you get a diploma or or a, an accounting degree, marketing degree. Uh, or, or get a, a your your end levels for from a technical point of view. You mm. can certainly then uh, you 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 will find employment in in the motor industry. I mean it's endless if mm. we think about it. W- within your business, I think yeah. you were saying earlier, there's the clerks, there's the mm. um, yeah 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 the finance and insurance ladies. They they sit on the floor. You come in to buy a car. They send all your details off to the bank. They advise you on insurance, warranties, etc. Yes. So. There's opportunities in, in, in all of it, yeah. Could we be frank, I mean, and just ask basically what kind of salaries is a salesperson looking at now in this industry? A I mean, good, money. A good one. <laughs> yes. A good one. What's I, obtainable? I, I, I sign off several commissions in excess of 90000 a month. Nine zero. Nine zero. yeah. Okay. Those, those are the top guys. The average sales guy who's selling eight to ten cars a month should be earning, depending on the brand he's with, but should be earning somewhere around about 30,000 rand. Plus, you get a car, uh, medical aid, all those benefits. So, it's, it's, so a, it's, a, it's a really a good industry, good industry yeah, for yeah. sure. And, and like you were saying, it's not necessarily the qualification. It's the experience yeah. when you get there. Mm-hmm. And do you guys provide, at CMH, do you provide the necessary sales training? Oh, yeah. No, we've got a, we've got a constant uh, sales training program. Uh, sales, uh, we do workshop managers training. We do service advisors, we upgrade them. Sales managers training. We, we, if you aren't training the people, you, you, you're gonna, you're gonna fall behind very quickly. So, so what's coming up in the future of CMH? What car launches have you got coming up, and uh, what, what, what interesting things uh, can uh, the listeners uh, well, I look forward to? Look, I, obviously, car launches constantly. Uh, Chad will be very, very keen to look at the new MX-5. Which is, can't wait you, for the you, new MX-5. You, you, comment, you commented on the the Italian styling oh, yes, in, yeah. in the Mazda 2. This, I believe, was uh, a collaboration with Alfa Romeo. With Alfa Romeo, yes. So uh, um, lightweight, low power, yeah. Colin Chapman's design ethos. Um, I can't wait for that one. That one, and of course, Ford Mustang. Uh, fourth quarter. That's the one I can't wait for. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait for it either. No, I think I mean, that's I, be I'm a little bit torn. One. I'm going to have to ask my boss for two cars because uh, the the Mustang's coming and the Focus RS, Ooh, which yes. uh, my, the last one I had was was fantastic. I mean, it was a uh, my daughter loved it. She she'd just say, Dad, go fast. I won't tell Mom. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just interject then, just quickly ask? There's been a lot of speculation about which Mustang is actually going to, or which engine derivatives mm. are going to be available in South Africa. Do we know? Is yeah. There a little the, bit? the 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 V8 and the V6. Okay. Um, 2.3 EcoBoost. 2.3 EcoBoost. Yeah. I think it's 200 and. 50 odd kilowatts okay. so it, it won't be slow so we will uh, be getting the v8 one no, because and the v8 predominantly the v8 to start with 
So then, no. and, yeah. Okay, because there was uh, a lot of speculation that we weren't going to get the V8 model, that we were just no, going to get the V6 and no, the 2.3. No, no, we're definitely getting the V8, uh, and that's. But it's going to be very limited numbers. Mm. Uh, if you, if you if you can wrestle it out of the dealer's hands, you you might get your hands on one. But it's it's going to be <laughs> if if you haven't put your name down now, you you're going to be waiting a long time. Mm. I, um, I'm, I'm really excited, yeah. especially for those two. Yeah. yeah, the third one, the RS, is uh, is also going to be that's an entertaining gonna be fun. one. Yeah. yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and then obviously, I can't just plug the brands that are, that that I re- represent directly. Mm. Uh, Volvo XC90 has just come out, yeah. which the Volvo guys are very very positive about. They they think it's going to be a great competitor for X5. Yeah, um, game changer that one. Very very much for Volvo. Uh, it shows a new de- design philosophy. Uh, very completely different car. Mm. Yeah, uh, it's a total, totally different approach for them. So you're talking about all these wonderful cars coming, coming. When? Mm. Oh, when, when? <laughs> <laughs> CX3, uh, which is as Mazda's little uh, SUV. That that's a car I think you would like. Uh, SUV. Why why do you put an SUV with me, Trevor? Oh, tow your back. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> tow your back. That's clever. Eight nice Fine. comeback. <laughs> Uh, so those those will be coming uh, from Mazda now in November. You got Everest, uh, which is Ford's new SUV com- competing with uh, Discovery, etc. Mm-hmm. That'll be coming now in October. Oh, we'll be attending BMAX yeah. launch, which and, is happening and, and, next and week. And BMAX, which is a completely different little car, uh, very unusually styled, mm-hmm. and I think great for moms. It's got doors that slide, so your kids can't open it and bang the the person next to you, <laughs> which is a, a, a great feature. Yes. And then Honda have got a little HRV coming out, which is a little seven seater. Um, and those are really the, the, the main products that are getting launched now. Uh, Jag's got a couple of mid-size saloons coming. But that's all now before the end of the year. Hmm. Well, th- well, there's some exciting cars. Oh, ah, I mean, sorry, sorry. And yeah. don't forget Ranger facelift. Mm, uh, yes, but you've got to stay cool. on top of your game because you've got, I mean, there's so many cars that you guys are involved with. I mean, uh, it's, 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 it's... Well, that's why we, we tend to split it up. So I look after Ford and Mazda. Somebody else looks after the Volvo side. Yeah. Uh, because otherwise, yeah, it does be, get it, a bit complicated. Yes, and and yeah. you and you seem to give each other competition, like we were saying oh, always. the whole yeah. time. Yeah. So a bit of internal competition. Trevor, thank you. That was uh, really nice having mm. you here. Oh, thanks um, for having me. I think it's some very yeah. interesting questions and, and and facts about CMH, and it's nice and important for the consumer to realise that a dealer is actually there to to help them, and they just need to also make sure that they ask the relevant questions. Yes. Yeah. From a say, we got to, We always have to take responsibility ourselves as well. And remember, salesmen are salesmen. <laughs> they make lots in, of money. In, we know now. In any yeah. industry. So, in any industry. Yeah. So, yeah. So just quickly, um, before we close off, if you want to join in, for um, especially on the hashtag 99 cent new car, remember the boot volume is the same amount of blood that the human heart pumps each hour. So there's a tip if you missed it. Otherwise, remember the daily clues are on Twitter at Autotrader SA. You can find it there. And then just quickly, also the Master 2, your review. That sounds interesting. I'm going to look at it as well, Chad. But you can get this if you visit the Auto Central page on Cliff Central or on autotrader.co.za. You'll see the review there. Yep. Uh, it w- sh- would be at the top, though, surely. Otherwise, just... If not, just search, search, for, Mazda search for Mazda 2 under yeah. the new 1. car 5. news and reviews yeah. and that, and you'll be able to find all the write-ups, the pictures, as well as the video reviews. I mean, it's there. a fantastic package. If, if you say it's unlimited mileage, I've got to go look at that. <laughs> That's fantastic. And then also, what's coming up this weekend? We've got the MotoGP coming up um, in Indianapolis, Motor Speedway. It's on Women's Day, guys. Don't get it wrong. It's Sunday. Okay, yes, Women's Sunday, Day is Sunday, Women's 9th Day. of yeah. August. <laughs> so you get the Monday important. as well. <laughs> yes, it's you a bonus the for the guys. The Monday. Sunday is the Women's Day. Monday, you can make it yours. And on Monday, we've got a huge national event, a Tolton drag mm-hmm. event for those lovers, motorsport lovers. Round four of the SA National Drag Racing Championship. Yes. So, I mean, that's going to be a big one. That's not just what your little street cars and that. We're talking about all the big cars. We're talking about the six, seven second uh, yeah. top alcohol uh, dragsters and that, purpose built drag vehicles, you know, they're running... This is, this is the stuff to go people. and look for, because you were talking earlier about um, how much were you doing in the plane? Something just over 200? Yeah, yeah, my little airplane does 160 k's an hour, and that little glass air was doing 350 to 400 kilometers an hour. I mean, that's 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 fast. <laughs> so you can go and have a look at some of the fastest competitors in SA that's going to be at Tolton on Monday. They're doing a quarter mile, six to seven seconds, yeah. over 300 kilometers wow. an hour. Just to put it's that ridiculous. into quick perspective there, one of these vehicles, if you had to bring that glass air and fly past it, and as soon as he comes down that 
that approach to the start line of the drag run and one of these vehicles starts, he will make it to the end of the quarter mile, 400 meters, before, before that glass air. Yeah. And he's continuing the speed. That's how fast they accelerate. Think, stupid, think, stupid acceleration, massive V8 motors, supercharged, nitrous fed, and pretty looking cars as well. So a great day out for everybody. Uh, and young and, and parachutes to stop them. Yeah, p- plenty yes. of parachutes <laughs> to stop them. And Kitty let you know, down at the you, bottom. You, know, you can be fast, but please make sure you can stop. Mm. So it's 110 rand a ticket for adults, 60 rand for kids. Fun event for the boys and the family and the women. I'll be there um, on Monday. So from us, thank you at SA Speed Queen. And at Autotrader SA and at George Mini. At Chad Lookoff. Thanks for joining us. And remember, a secret to a balanced life. Keep moving. Cliffcentral.com.